So the method that we use in becoming genius has four stages. For any given subject, the first stage is duplication, making an exact copy of the source materials. If, for example, we're going to learn about music, well, we have to go to a book on music and then make an exact copy of that knowledge in our own minds. Or if we're going to learn about learning like we are now, you have to be able and willing also to make an exact copy of that knowledge in your own mind. And then we can talk meaningfully. Then we can have real communication. Then we can actually transfer the understanding that we have and the abilities that we have to you. And then you can exercise and learn those abilities yourself. Or I should say, teach yourself those abilities. Because that's what we're really talking about here. This is the method of self-instruction. The second stage is understanding. And I define that as systems thinking through logic. What does that mean? Systems thinking is a discipline of thought where one makes a dynamic working model of a subject in one's mind. You know, having duplicated the subject matter, then one puts it into a model, a working model, that works the same way as the thing you're studying itself. That allows you to predict the results of any action by playing with the model. This is how Einstein invented relativity. He made what's called a Gedanken experiment, a thought experiment. He set up an experiment in his mind. Einstein came up with relativity without ever going into a lab. He didn't do it by experiment. He did it by thinking. He had such a perfect model of the universe and the laws of nature in his mind that, at least as far as motion and time and things like that, he was able to model them perfectly and see, well, what if? What if you did this? What if you did that? What if you have something moving near the speed of light? What would happen? What would happen to time and distance and all these other things? And he came up with relativity just by thinking about it. You can do that too. The third stage is called analysis, the contemplation of abstract relationships. So we've duplicated the subject matter, we made a model internally in our own mind, and now we're going to analyze that model and abstract the relationships among its pieces. This is an analysis of ontological relationships, and we're going to get to ontology in a minute. The fourth stage is metacognition. Metacognition is the realization of a new state of being based on the information that you have duplicated, modeled, and analyzed. Metacognition is when the light goes on. <laughs> when you finally say, ah, oh, I got it. Huh? When your understanding transcends words and symbols and becomes a state of being, that's what it's all about. That's what we're getting at. And these four stages show you how. Now, I'd like to look at these same four stages from another point of view. Again, for any given subject, the duplication is on the mental level, the level of words and symbols. Here I am talking to you, and you're hearing my words, and you're decoding those words, and you're getting an idea of what I'm saying just by the words and symbols, huh? just by the words I'm speaking and the symbols that you're seeing on your screen. That is an absolute necessity. Uh, if you don't duplicate, if you don't make an exact copy, if you make a wrong copy, or an imperfect or partial copy of a piece of knowledge, you're not thinking with all the information. You're not firing on all, on all cylinders. <laughs> so you're not going to get the same result. You're going to get some different result. We don't know what that's going to be, but it's not going to be the same as the original. So you have to start from a perfect copy, duplication. The next stage, understanding, is on the intellectual level. This is where intelligence comes in. Modeling requires intelligence because you have to see, okay, this is the meaning of all these words and symbols that I've taken in and duplicated. Now, 
how does this actually work? When I tweak over here, what happens on the other end? What is the relationship of cause and effect? What controls what? What, what actually does the work here and how does it work? Now this gets into the next stage, analysis. Analysis is the ontological level. What is the meaning of these relationships? What is cause? What is effect? Uh, what is a major quality and a minor quality? What are the different relationships between and among the various parts of my model? And finally, what does it all mean? When you finally understand what it means, then metacognition occurs, and this is the ontic level, the level of being and action. In other words, up until now we've been learning, but when you reach metacognition, you have reached mastery. You have become the thing that you're studying. It has been absorbed into your being. Now there's no more need to think about it. You can just be it, you see? This is what we're talking about. This is mastery. This is being genius. Becoming genius, you have to go through these other steps. It's a lot of work. I'll be honest with you. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the lazy. You have to be ambitious. You have to be driven. You have to be passionate about something. Uh, find something you really love. Something that you love enough to do a lot of it. Because that's what it's going to take <laughs> to get you through all these stages unless you're extraordinarily intelligent and you apply this exactly by the book. Now, if you can do that, if you can go through this process by the book without questioning or doubting it, but just do it, you will find the speed of learning will increase by a factor of maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand, and the efficiency of learning will also increase. But most satisfying of all, the depth of learning will increase beyond your wildest dreams. It's one thing to learn that two and two is four. It's quite another thing to learn number theory and why two and two is four. It's quite another thing to learn abstract mathematics or ontology and understand why we need concepts like two and two is four. But what is the meaning of those concepts and what are the powers and abilities that come from having those concepts. And when you get to that point, you're ready to have a metacognition, <laughs> which can't be explained in words, by the way. If you've never had this happen to you, it means you've never done enough of anything, you've never gone deep enough into anything to actually make it a part of you, to make it part of your being. You're not ready for your being to change. You're not ready to become a genius in that subject. But when you do, You'll know it, believe me, because it's an extraordinarily profound and deeply affecting experience. When I say the light goes on, I mean that quite literally. The mind becomes brilliant. It becomes effulgent. Suddenly you can see so many things you couldn't see before. And this is true of everything from riding a bicycle all the way up to complete enlightenment. So this is quite an adventure. Let's review a few things about becoming skillful. The process of becoming skillful is a cycle with three stages. Practicing, causing something to arise or to happen, in other words, doing something. Increasing, developing it by repetition. And finally, investigating, observing and reflecting upon the practice. For example, if I'm playing music, I'll take my instrument, and I'll make a tone, or a scale, or a chord, or I'll play a song, and then I'll play it again, and I'll play it again, and again, and again. And finally, I'll sit down and I'll reflect, and I'll say, well, is that good enough? Is that really what I want? Am I saying what I'm trying to say with this performance? Do I want to adjust things, uh, change the harmony, change the tempo, uh, or is it good enough? Or is it, is it ever good enough? <laughs> These are the questions you ask yourself when you're investigating. Investigating is by far the most important stage of developing skillfulness. It means observing one's experience, taking it to heart, 
and reflecting on it wisely until you understand and perceive clearly all the phenomena involved in each step of the practice. This is what it takes to become expert. If you don't become expert in a field, you're not going to reach the highest stage of becoming that thing. To simply learn how to play a couple of notes on a, a synthesizer or program a drum machine is different from becoming a really expert musician. Learning to quote from uh, the scriptures is completely different from actually becoming realized like a Buddha. These are very different levels of advancement. You should not remain content with a superficial understanding of whatever it is. If you're going to become a leader, for example, become a leader of such power and depth that you don't require any position in an organization. In fact, organizations will evolve around you simply by your presence, simply by your being. Look at the Buddha. The Buddha gave up his position as a prince. He was offered leadership in two very important spiritual organizations. He turned that down as well. And he went off by himself, and he figured out by himself how to attain Buddhahood. And he did it. And now look, there are whole countries that are run by Buddhism. There are whole, and in the past there was a whole empire in India, uh, the empire of the Emperor Ashoka that was run according to Buddhist laws. Buddha himself had no position, wanted no position, but he was one of the greatest leaders in history, or Jesus Christ, or Mohammed, or any of the great innovators in science or anything. They had no position. They had no title. They had no organization. Einstein was just a kid working as a patent clerk, but because he was such a great scientist, because he was a great leader in his field, a whole discipline of relativity and atomic physics and so on grew up around him. That's the kind of leadership we're talking about. That's the depth of skill that we're aiming for. And we don't want to accept anything less, and neither should you. Now, finally, I just want to review a little bit about skillful living. The process of becoming skillful should especially be applied to foundational knowledge. Skillful living provides foundational knowledge of human life and beingness, as well as techniques for developing that knowledge to a high degree of skillfulness. Foundational knowledge is defined as follows. It aims at the extinction of the suffering, unsatisfactoriness, and imperfection of every experience or state of being in the world. It has an intrinsic truth that you can see and experience for yourself without having to rely on authority, tradition, logic, philosophy, hearsay and rumor, common sense, preconceived ideas, the social status of the presenter, or because you consider yourself a student of the presenter. These are all dangerous assumptions because they can lead you to accept an idea on belief on faith alone, without testing it, without examining the assumptions behind it, without experiencing it for yourself. Real learning only comes from experience. Book learning is just the appetizer. Uh, I'm not saying it's not important. It is. But book learning is just the prelude to actual learning, because learning requires growth of being. And this is the thing that ordinary education has ruined in everybody that I know, because ordinary education allows you to become so-called learned person with a degree and all kinds of letters after your name without changing your being. And so they cheat us. They don't force us to grow. And the hardest thing about spiritual teaching, in my experience, is getting students out of this habit and actually getting them to grow, to seek out new experiences, to seek out new ways of being, and develop them in themselves. Because nobody can do that for you. It's like thinking for yourself. Nobody can teach you to think for yourself. <laughs> nobody can really can teach you to roller skate. Maybe they can set up conditions where you're motivated to learn for yourself. That's the best they can do. And that's the best I can do by making these videos or by our apprenticeship program
you can become situated in a situation that motivates you to actually learn, to actually change your being. But that's the best we can do. We can't communicate to you what a metacognition is. I mean, we can talk about it, but we can't actually give it to you by talking about it because it can't be spoken in words. It can only be experienced. When you experience it, you'll know it. And you'll say, whoa, you mean I went through you know, 12 years of school or 16 years of school or whatever it was, and I never had an experience like this. I never had a growing experience where I learned something about life so profoundly, so deeply. You can come here to Sri Lanka and go in a temple and study Buddhism for years and years and never have a metacognition about it. It's quite possible. That's because academic learning does not give growth of being. So from the beginning, we are stressing growth in being, becoming. And in that way, we'll get you really ready to have a metacognition, to bring yourself to realization of the subject matter and become genius.